Hello friends, I made this for. My name is Lauren and today my hair is extra poofy because today is the dark moon and it's just ready. It's just, it's giving. It's giving. This moon is all about giving. This is the dark moon in Sagittarius. Um, hi, hello. If you've never been here before, my name is Lauren and I like to talk about astrology, tarot, and toxic spirituality. Today is a dark moon reading collectively. I've already done a collective reading for Sagittarius season, which is beautiful. It was all about taking the gifts that are being offered and like really softening to receive these like more mental sort of gifts that we're, we're kind of gearing up with this season of Sagittarius being very much tied to this like student teacher sort of position that we're being reminded about and where we can enter back into. So if you want to see those videos, definitely stay to the end. There will be all that sort of stuff popping up around me. Like, comment, subscribe, do that thing, blah, blah, blah. You don't care. You're just here to, to see me pull hearts. And that's great because that's what I'm here to do. <sighs> deep, deep breaths. This is a good dark moon. Um, we're post-eclipse. We're, we're, we're entering the, the end of fall. Winter comes soon. And then we can just like huddle down like little bears in a, in a, in hibernation. Just kidding. It's capitalism, baby. Work until you die. Just kidding. That's, that was really dark. Anyway, thanks for being here. Let's pull some cards. Let's see. First question. Collective, collective pool. So this is going to be very generalized. Grab your water. Stay hydrated. Take your vitamins. This flu season is crazy. Flu season is crazy. Everyone at, I'm a teacher and everyone at my school is getting sick. So take your mushrooms. Take your mushrooms, that'll help. And your elderberry. I'm all out, so, you know, gotta re up. Fire, fire cider, whatever it is. Let's see here. Let's pull for. What are we planting? So, dark moon is a lot of manifesting, a lot of like place your seeds in the ground and let them germinate, right? So let's kind of ask the question. What are we planting this, this dark moon? What are we planting with the sweet embers of Sagittarius? Two of Cups, what are we planting? Connection, baby, reflection with each other, baby. Now, if you've been here before, you already know the deal. I am not necessarily the type of person who believes that the Two of Cups is very lovers related. This card gets called the mini lovers card all the fucking time. And if you've been here before, you know how I feel about the lovers being interpreted as the lovers. I don't think it's helpful. I think it's really like short-sighted and not really applicable to everyone who pulls it. However, what is applicable outside of seeing it as like the love of your life is entering woo is we are here to be in union with each other. These two people are are tapping cups. They're talking. They look. They are looking at each other. And with this time, let's keep in mind, we're also probably going to go see family and things like that. This is a card that is all about general authentic connection and reflection through those connections. Now, this is not to gaslight you and say that you are your racist uncle. However, we are... <laughs> here to walk each other home. Now, you don't need to have the energy to walk everybody home with you because sometimes people, they're just not here to do it with you. They're, they're on their, your, their own path, their own thing. We can't intercept every 
foul, like every ball that's flying through the air, right? We, we kind of got to conserve our energy. And I've talked about that quite a bit. However, with this card comes a level of stillness that we can kind of tap into a reflection. We don't have to hold on to this as like we have to look into our whole family and reflect who we really are. Like that's a little extreme. What we can do is, is say, you know what, I can pull strength from those who are a strength to me. I can reach out to someone as a teacher slash I teach back. We are student teachers for each other everywhere. And that doesn't mean everyone is on that journey with you. Again, I'll say it so many times because boy, howdy. Boy, howdy is it a lot. It's a lot to take in. And I'll be honest, I've been having crazy dreams about talking to folks on a personal level. I, I've been talking to folks in my dream and being really in, in, in my fucking anger about it. Which, again... If someone is making us angry, I'm not trying to gaslight you and say, what do you see in yourself that that person is reflecting back to you? But like, how can you see this person and go, you know what, that's wounding. And I'm not here to be the place for wounding to be put. I'm not the vessel for other people's anger. I'm working through my own shit and I can see that that person is working through their motherfucking anger and I can honor that and say, it doesn't involve me. It doesn't involve me. A lot of the time when I see two of cups, I am tending to be, look at that person and really reflect. It's the fucking holidays. It's hard enough. Don't fucking try me, okay? Go ahead and remove yourself and look at it objectively and go, is this really about me or is this really about the other person? And where do I go to fill up my cup? Because it's not always with our physical family, it's with our chosen family. Because sometimes our physical family does not have the capacity to love us as we are. And that's okay. This is a message for all you that are, are like really struggling with family connections specifically because this could be like reaching out to your chosen family and making those connections and, and reeling in and supporting one another in that time, right? But it can also be accepting that what you see in your physical, like the family you were born into, is not always where you're going, where you're growing, and where you want to be. You can simply observe and go, these people don't respect me, they don't respect who I am, I don't need that. And that is an important lesson, especially now after this fucking terrible weekend that we just had. I say that for all the queer kids. If you are going into this holiday, like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where I'm going to be supported. Go to those who fill your cup up and vice versa, where you can fill them up, where you can be supported for them, and it's reciprocal. Don't go to the places where it's emptying you out and draining you of your personal power, energy, or ability to just feel okay. Because so many people steal that from us every day without us asking, without those people even being like parts of our lives. There's just passing moments of, of wickedness or, or meanness or just, they're just having a bad fucking day and that's not reflective of you. Peace is found with those that fill our cups up. So what we might be planting is deeper relationships in those that meet us where we're at not where they think we need to be or disapprove of who we are. And I say that not as someone who has been let down from their family necessarily like that, like I've seen other people been, but I've had so many friends that I've watched suffer this weird and just bitter ignorance of their family. So in this new moon, plant the Plant the foundation for connections of people that fill you up and vice versa. They meet you where you are, not where they think you need to be. Not where, oh, why won't you do this? Why don't you have a husband? Why don't you have kids? Like, Becca, have you seen the motherfucking economy? Patricia, really right now? 
Karen, are you serious? Kevin, shut the fuck up. No one asked you. Meet the people that meet you where you are and support you. And I want to just say I apologize to everyone who's a Patricia because that's my mother-in-law. She's very supportive. Where is this showing up for us collectively? What part of the heart is this showing up for us collectively? Because Two of Cups is a very heart-centered card. Where is this showing up for us collectively? Identity in the mind. So going back to what I already said, keeping the strength to go, this is who I am and this is what makes me feel empowered. I'm not going to entertain ideologies that harm me. I'm not going to entertain people who won't respect me. I'm not going to entertain people who decide that my identity as a person is wrong, right? Like that can be this season's prayer or lifelong prayer. Fuck it. Have it forever. But I think right now, specifically, we can all focus on who we want to be and who we're stepping into collectively as a as an individual, collectively and as an individual. That says I'm I'm not letting my mind get the best of me anymore. When we see swords, it's about the mind. When we see queen, we are deepening our understanding. When we see court cards, it's not everyone else, it's us. And again, this is my interpretation. So maybe you see this as being like someone in your life that really steps up and supports you. Maybe that is what this is. But when it is what part of the heart, it's the mental part of the heart that says my identity and who I see myself as is so valid. This is coming out really, really about embracing who we are, our purpose, and how we view ourselves is the intentions we're planting this season. We can do anything when we start to really believe in who we are and acknowledge that other people do not grant us peace. Other people do not grant us the ability to feel safe. We have to find that for ourselves. It's really hard. It's really, really hard, especially in this like climate. <sighs> But that's, that's where it comes from. When we find people that meet us and fill us up where we're at, doesn't have to be romantic, could be friends, could be family, could be a lot of things, even coworkers that are just like, you know what, I have your fucking back. I see you every day. You do the shit that nobody else wants to do. And you're just like, fuck, thank you. I needed that. Now I'm the queen of swords. Now I feel more in my power. I feel more capable. Queen of swords is all about deepening that connection and going, my brain doesn't have to, my thoughts don't create my reality. I do. A lot of people in the spiritual new age space like to be like, your thoughts create your reality, hun. Babe, I suffer from generalized anxiety disorder and depression. If that were the case, we I'd be in bad straits. But luckily my brain can't fucking get me because I'm I'm doing work outside of it. I'm doing work. Doing work. Doing God's work. Making making my world what I need to be so that I can fulfill my purpose and do what I need to do as a person. Go back to school and, and do the work that I want to create in this world. Start a family because I'm, I'm, I'm going to therapy and breaking those generational curses. Like, whatever it is for you, we're stepping into our power this season. We got the Ace of Swords in the last uh, pull. Might have gotten the Queen of Swords too. That's kind of crazy. But the point is... We're stepping into that power, We're stepping into that power in our lives. And let's just call, pull one last card to be the medicine card moving forward as this new moon empowers us. What is the card moving forward? A little medicine card of support, of love. A little love letter from the dark moon. Dark moon's that. Page of Swords. Started from the bottom, now we're here. 
Like so fucking, so fucking good. Paige reminds us that we can always step into, like, even though we're deepening, we're deepening our connection and our faith and stuff, that doesn't mean we're going to some days have moments where we really question who we are and why we're doing and what we're doing. But the page also reminds us that sometimes the seed that's being planted in our lives is us and our ability to come with fresh perspective, our ability to heal, our ability to begin again. We're never stuck. We're never stagnant. Life is always spiraling up. So even though we might feel like we're going from page to queen, page to queen, that does not mean, I know, baby girl, I know, that does not mean that we're regressing. We're just reminding ourselves of where we started. I gotta wrap this up. She's pissed. She wants to be in here so bad. Not every day we'll feel like the queen. Some, some days we'll feel like the page and we're gonna have to build up again. And this is a beautiful thing because we get to revisit old ideas and, and be reminded of what doesn't serve and what does and how we have this innate ability to start over without fear. Like sometimes it's scary, yeah. But not every time is it scary. Not every time is it overwhelming because we have people in our lives to fill our cups up. Even if it's just someone who's walking by us and says, wow, I really love your coat. I hope you're having a great day. Like that, you can also be that person. We can be the seed that God is planting and say, you know what? I'm taking control over my mind, not so that I can create this magical world out of nothing, but to soothe and make myself feel okay again, to breathe again, to go, you know what? I can start again. Not every day we feel like the queen, not every day we feel like the page, but neither is forever. We are constantly going through that. So with this dark moon, pay attention to your, your re relationships, to who fills your cup, who's meeting you where you're at, and who's helping you move through the different seasons of your life to, to feel really empowered. Holy shit, she's going to knock the door down. Who's really nurturing you to, to empower you forward? And, and make sure that you are planting seeds with those communities, with those people, with those people who are really honoring your time, honoring your value as a person, and honoring who you are in every facet. Anyway, I've got to let my cat out um, or in or just like open the door because she's going to go fucking crazy. But until next time, friends, I hope you stay well. Links down below if you want to connect more. And until next time, bye-bye.